see so many golfers waste a ton of money and I want you to stop. You see, in today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about how to utilize a rangefinder and how to make sure you get the best value for your money. So I've got the brand new Malsey PFS2 rangefinder. This features a ton of different technologies which we'll talk through in today's video, but I don't think it matters what rangefinder you buy if you don't do these things correct. These are some of the most expensive items you can buy. You can get a Malsey, you can get a Bushnell, you can get a Golf Buddy, you can get any kind of GPS, but realistically, I'm a huge fan of the Malsey products because not only do they offer some of the best on the market, but they also offer some of the more affordable products as well. So you'll see here with the PFS2, I've got the slope switched on, so I can turn that off if I want to if we're in tournament mode, but I'm gonna keep that on because for me, I generally play with my friends. So we have here 153 yards and it's playing 153 yards, it's bang on the nose here. So we don't have to utilize the slope too much. I'm gonna talk about the P2P, so the point to point measurement in this video as well, because that for me is revolutionary. Malty have worked on this for 15 years and it actually started with kind of architectural drawings to allow people to measure distances from point to point. That fills me with confidence more than anything. And it also tells me what shot I'm gonna play here, because I could just about probably hit maybe a nine iron, but I'm gonna go with a, a longer club. I'm gonna go with a seven and just try and flight it down a little bit more, because yes, it's important that you know your numbers. Yes, it's important that you know that you have a 160 club, a 145 club, a 130 club, but it's also important to know that you can rein that down. You can dial that down. You have different shots for different conditions because the wind here is slightly into off left. So I know that's gonna kind of bring the ball into that flag if I just aim nicely at the middle of the green. I'm not gonna try and draw this in as such, but I'm gonna try and just control the ball flight. And you can see there, the wind's now gonna bring that nice, that's all over the flag actually. Go on then. Oh, there is already a shot there that Chris has played for our second channel over on Get Good At Golf. I think I've got it closer than him actually, so I'll take that as a little win. But as you can see there, that wasn't a full-blooded seven iron because say if I if I mouse the, the back of this green here, I'm gonna play a couple of holes with this and just show you the differences. So we'll step up in between the markers. I know that the mound at the back of this green measures 180 yards playing 175 yards. So if I would have hit a full-blooded seven iron there, realistically, I know that this is gonna cover the back of that green if I want to. So just knowing that you have different shots in your locker, different swings in your locker, I'm still gonna aim at the middle of the green and this shot should just go a little bit longer and I know that that shot now, although looks good, is playing around 165. As you can see there, that's landed long and spun back. So I've got the right accuracy, but I would have been so frustrated with myself if I've not have mounted that, if I've not have got the slope, if there was some to take into account, hit the perfect shot, just hit the wrong club or the wrong flight with that club. So that's something to pay into account because if you do go and spend your money on a new rangefinder, work out how you can use it for your game. Let's get down there, let's finish that off and let's see how we can use it more on a par four and potentially par five. See two very different shots there with how they've landed and where they've landed. The first shot we hit landed slightly short and released up. That was the lower ball flight that I wanted to play and it is inside Chris's as well. So we'll move Chris's away there. The second one's pitched probably 20 yards further and it stopped dead. It was a much higher flight. You would anticipate with the landing angle, you would get that stoppage. So for me, it's nice to know that first of all, I know my distances. I know the Malice PF2 is helping me kind of gauge those distances and hit the distances, and it's giving me a potential for a birdie opportunity on the opening hole of the day. Whether we make this or not, I know I've given myself the best possible opportunity, and then we can move on to the next hole with the easiest part you're ever gonna make. That's disappointing, but I'd be more disappointed if I was a Mr. Green and made a bogey. Par three successfully navigated in par, and this is where so many people wouldn't dream of getting their rangefinder out. You'd look at this hole and go, well, I know there's a hazard up there somewhere. It goes to the right a bit. There's some trees on the left and it opens up, but realistically, I want to gauge a couple of things. First of all, I want to know how far up that hazard is, so I can see the hazards just by those trees, and the hazards measure in 275 yards. So I know that if I'm gonna hit a driver, I have to kind of take it round the corner a little bit. I also know if I go point to point with the trees on the left and the trees at the back, 
The trees on the left are 179, and obviously the trees at the back are 275, like I said. So I've got almost a hundred yards gap there if I were to go left. I'm trying to go not to go left, but I know that I'm kind of opening the hole up and dissecting it for myself. That took a couple of seconds, and I know realistically now that it's three wood. You thought I was going to hit driver, Bobby, didn't you? But if I hit three wood now, I can't physically go in that hazard. And that's where you can save yourself just a couple of shots. You might not see better players do this, but I honestly think if you're a player where maybe you do lose a lot of golf balls, you go in a lot of hazards, you go out of bounds more often than maybe you should do, this is something that could really, really help you just with a little bit of course management. And that's where I think massively people like Chris can help, people who've carried on. So I've learned so much from Chris. Don't let him hear that because that, that really wouldn't go down well. But just keeping the ball in play, making sure you know kind of what yardage you're going to have in regards to your second shot is going to help you massively. And I don't have to try and take this corner on now. I can literally just play a shot down the middle like that, fade it ever so slightly. That now is in position A because I've used my noggin and I've used my miles here to help me hit the right shot down that fairway. So a massive three wood for me there off the tee. And to be honest, it's a very good job I did hit the three wood because you look at where this hazard is. I guarantee that if I'd have hit a driver with the same, well, strike quality and speed, we'd probably have gone in that hazard. I'm thinking here that the ball's not going to roll. And in fact, it has rolled out quite a lot. It's hit the corner and then released out. So it gives us a really good chance to look at that point to point as well, because I think it's something that could really dumb down golf for a lot of people. I know that sometimes when I'm playing my best golf ever, I don't want a number. I want a window to hit. I want a window of 20 or 30 yards to hit because I know that if I get it in that distance with the right accuracy, I'm going to have a 20 foot putt, which from here is going to be well within tour average. So I'm going to be very happy with that. The key then is either hold the putt or just don't three putt. Probably don't three putt because that's more like it. So I'm going to go standard vision here and we have 139 playing 142 so it's three yards uphill but if i go point to point here point a is 111 and point b is 139 like we said so it's 28.7 yards with the slope it's a 30 yard point to point so i'll put that on screen now so you can see it it takes a while to get the camera in the lens so we'll do that afterwards Bobby but very very impressive so I know now that as long as I carry it over 115 yards realistically I'm going to be on the green and I also know that I've got kind of 30 yards to play with so if I now go with a really nice controlled nine iron that's going to be there or thereabouts what would you say about that flag Bobby being a mental performance coach yourself it's right at the back it's right at the back that's exactly what I was hoping you'd say so what would you say to people who are maybe going to try and get it close to that flag don't bother. So I know now, if I just hit a nice 135 yard, 140 yard max shot, I'm going to have an uphill putt and I'm not going to be putting myself in any danger whatsoever. So I've struck that pretty well. It's all over the flag. I don't think it's going to be long. It might be a little bit short, but as you can see, that's the exact shot I'm hoping to play. So in this video, I'm plotting my way around this golf course. And this is something which when I was playing a lot more, when I was practicing a lot for my PGA playing ability test, that was probably one of the biggest points in my life where I thought, right, I'm very average at golf. I don't have that much consistency. What can I do to give myself the edge to play better golf, just to score a little bit better? For me, I found it was giving myself wider margins because it takes the pressure away, it takes the stress away. I've caught that a little bit chunky to go, oh, I've got that worm, Bobby, look. That's awful, isn't it? But from there, I know I didn't have to strike that properly. To be honest, if I'd have struck it properly, I probably would have been closer towards the flag, but it may have brought the back end of the green in play. I don't want a downhill putt, and I sure as hell do not want to go along and have to play a flop shot to that flag. Just so happens we now have another birdie opportunity. Do we roll it in? Maybe. If we don't roll it in, do we care? Not so much, because we're ticking the holes off with pars and moving towards the goal of shooting a nice, consistent, stress-free round of golf. So I'm just talking to Bobby off camera there. And you know what? I actually think this is really good. It's really intuitive and it's really simple to do. You don't have to rely on like a mathematic equation like you would do if you had a caddy. Like if I was caddying someone, and I think Chris has done this in the past where you've just got an addition wrong or a subtraction wrong and it can cost you probably a shot or two shots if you do get it wrong. He'll never tell you that, but I'm sure it happened. Whereas this does it for you. I'm not sure 
how many people would use it, but it's that intuitive to do and it's that easy to do. Like I've just gone through that whole thing and done it again to show you guys the B-roll. And it was really easy. It was like, oh yeah, bunker, lip of the bunker, 111.9, 130 something for the plug, I can't remember. And then it gave me 28.9 A to B. So you know you've got that gap. And I really think that could help you guys lower your scores. I really, really do. I can't believe more rangefinders haven't thought about doing it, to be honest. And when I set out doing this video, I set out doing like a generic how to use a rangefinder kind of video, because I think so many people struggle with them. But I found this, and I think it's my new favorite thing. I really, really do. So watch this space for James shooting lower scores and walking into a bunker. Ooh. So I'm gonna say that I think that is the perfect played hole. Because in the past, I would hit driver there without thinking about it. And I've hit three wood. I've made sure I haven't gone in the hazard. I mean, you can see it's a nice wide fairway. And then I think we've hit almost the perfect approach shot. You could say you'd want to be closer and yeah, you always want to be closer. But having played that hole and having it being so stress-free, I'm really, really happy with that. Now we'll have a go at this. It's got to be slightly right to left and uphill, which is a pretty nice combination to have for a putt, I'd say. Certainly better than from where Bobby stood there. You wouldn't want to be there for your bogey or your birdie. No, it's it. That was a perfect line and I've not hit it, but it is another stress-free par, if you're not bad, from a foot. Guys, if you enjoyed that, smash that subscribe button below. The link for Miles is below. I think they're doing some fantastic things with budget range finders, with more expensive range finders, depending on what you want for your game. And apart from that, I'll see you all at exactly the same time tomorrow. I think that could really help. I really, like, I'm so excited by that now. The little things in life, innit, Bobby? <laughs>